kids at Colorado Model Railroad Museum. I'm Michelle and I'm Misty <laughs> and, and uh, we're coming today with our uh, last paleontology lesson in our paleontology series. Yes, it's hard to believe it's over after I today. Yeah. But today's a fun day um, with dinosaurs again. So uh, we want to thank our sponsor Greeley Station for <laughs> making this all possible and doing all the video production for these shows. Uh, without them, we could not we could not do this. No. So thank you, Greeley Station, and everyone involved there. <laughs> so we do appreciate it. Yeah. We really do. What is all these dinosaurs we have on the on, well, on the table today? What's you know, going on? First, we started talking about fossils, and and then we talked about excavation. Mm -hmm. We talked about how you preserve a fossil, and now we're going to look at what did dinosaurs look like. Now, none of these. We, we can't prove that this is exactly how they are. So colors are sometimes could be anything because no one really knows the answer. No. But these are some best guesses. And these are the dinosaurs we had on hand. And we have almost all of the dinosaurs of Colorado with us today. Now, dinosaurs of Colorado, when we mean by that is we mean these are the dinosaurs that were found here in Colorado, right? right? They roamed here. Wow. <laughs> so. They were the giants that roamed before us. Uh -huh. So right. that's so cool. The ground you walk on today was once walked on by a dinosaur. That is so awesome. Mainly during that Mes Mesozoic, I get the word right, Mesozoic <laughs> period. And so we talked about time in our last one, how there's the time periods. And we lived in, the, we live now in the Cenozoic, but yes. in the Mesozoic before us is when these dinosaurs roamed. So let's talk about a few of the Colorado dinosaurs. I'm going to move some stuff around. So the first one we're going to talk about is probably the most famous dinosaur of all time, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> Right? We know he's a carnivore. Right. We learned about carnivores and herbivores, right? right? Do you know that the very first specimen of T-Rex was found in Colorado? I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I just thought that was really interesting. So as we go through, I'm going to tell you which ones were the first found in Colorado, and T-Rex was one of those. That's awesome. So the next one is Diplodocus. Diplodocus is? We're right right on the table here. You have that one. Okay, I do. I have Diplodocus. Right here. Uh, herbivore, herbivore, a, veg a vegetarian. <laughs> he was 70 feet long. Wow. Now feet, you know, this is a foot approximately. Imagine 70 of those. Yeah. <laughs> very, very big herbivore. And he has the long neck, right? So he can reach That's... into the trees. Yes. And get the leaves that he needs to eat. Absolutely. He, yep. You know what? If he were around today, he'd be great for picking fruit and helping us in the farm, you know, with True. <laughs> fruit and stuff like that off the trees. All right. Our next one has a really long name. His name is Haplocanthosaurus. Is that, that because he's happy? Haplocanthosaurus. And he looks similar to the Diplodocus, but he's got kind of a shorter neck, right? And so he's, uh, let me see, he's I guess they didn't give us his length on here, but he actually was first found in Colorado too. Another first. <laughs> Says he was discovered by a young college student working as an archeologist. Awesome. Paleontologist, isn't that great? So if they were still around <laughs> today, they would need a driver's license plate that says native. There you go. The native <laughs> native to Colorado driver's license plate. All right. native stickers on Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three dinosaurs that are found in Colorado. The next one, we don't actually have a, a a model of in 3D, but we do have a printout, and it is a plesiosaurus. And if you can see the picture, now this one lived in the water. So what do you think about that in Colorado? Wow. Do you think it was up in uh, Carter Lake? I don't know. I think that the seas actually covered Colorado at one point in time. I can imagine so. And that's why you often find seashells. Remember the very first one, the first episode where we talked about fossils and how yes. seashells are found all along the front range of the Rocky Mountains mm -hmm. and in the Rocky Mountains because they were once underwater. Yeah. So this is the Plesiosaurus and he's also found in Colorado. Gosh, wow. <laughs> the next one is the Ceratosaurus. I hope I say that one right. Oh, it's a K. Karatosaurus. Karatosaurus. Karatosaurus okay. means right. horned lizard. And we don't have a model of this one either. But here's a picture. And the Karatosaurus was a very vicious predator. And he was smaller, but his teeth were super blade-like. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so he's a carnivore, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so far, we have, most of them have been herbivores that we, we know about that have mm -hmm. been found in Colorado. And yeah. then this one is a carnivore and T-Rex was a carnivore. And our next one is a really, really a local dinosaur. So these three here we didn't have models of again, but this one is cool. It's called a fruitidin. A fruitidin. Fruitidin. That does not roll off your tongue like a fruitidin. Fruitidin. So like the word fruit, like fruits and vegetables. Uh -huh. Fruitidin. Ah. 
And now this guy eater? is almost pictured actual size. Is not a oh my goodness. They were they weren't more than a foot long and they weighed a half a pound to a pound. That's like a hamster or a guinea pig. Like little tiny dinosaurs and found in Fruita, Colorado. Wow. And were discovered here and named after the town of Fruita. And they're part of the uh, on the Morrison Plain is what they call uh -huh. that area. And you know there's the dinosaur museum up in Morrison. Oh, wow. we'll have to go visit there. Yeah, and so it's called Dinosaur Ridge okay. and it's a very cool museum that you can visit just west of Denver. Nice. And that's where some of these are found. So that's a fun Colorado dinosaur. It is. And the oh, it in. I love it. That's like the smallest dinosaur <laughs> I think I've ever heard of. I thought it was cool. Now the next one is probably the most well-known of all dinosaurs beyond the T-Rex. And he's the Brachiosaurus, right? Brachiosaurus is the largest dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> and he did roam Colorado. And the very first Brachiosaurus found in Colorado Found in first. Colorado. Wow. Colorado is known for our fossils. So wow. <laughs> again, there we're roaming go. the land that giants once roamed. Yep. Now he's yeah. a, obviously an herbivore. Yeah, that neck. Long yeah. neck. Herbivore. You got it. Yeah. All right. Our next one is called Allosaurus. And a lot of people don't know about the Allosaurus. And we think this is a, a model of him. It's the closest one he we could find. He is the, he's probably the second most known predator carnivore next to t-rex he's like a smaller t-rex i was gonna say do you think Not he might be smaller? related <laughs> yeah they're very similar um so he is uh, about 28 feet long wow also first discovered in colorado wow <laughs> another colorado native yes yeah oh my carnivore. goodness <laughs> could you imagine the driver's license plates they would need like <laughs> <laughs> now there's the next two dinosaurs are actually even more local to us here in Greeley. Mm -hmm. So the next one we're going to talk about is actually the Weld County dinosaur and he is the Triceratops. It's kind of dark on this table. But hopefully you can see that. The Triceratops was actually found in Weld County and after our lesson today we're going to have a zoom meeting with Jennifer Fench who's the communications director for Weld County. She's going to tell us some fun things about our county's own dinosaur. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. I didn't know so much. <laughs> oh, I feel yeah. like, wow, I want I want Triceratops. So we don't want to spoil her surprises for you in that Zoom meeting that we have recorded, mm -hmm. but this is our county's dinosaur and he has a name. Should we tell him his name? Sure, I think we can. I think we can. His name is Pops the Triceratops. Pops the Triceratops is our <laughs> well county dinosaur. So that's him. He's known because he has three horns. Yes. He's an herbivore and those horns are used in this big plate here we're all used for defense. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah that, so. uh, that's a shield. <laughs> it's a shield. I yeah. have to protect his neck area, right. which would be very vulnerable to a carnivore. Wow. So yeah, pretty neat how you can see all the, the, the ways that the natural world works. Right. Yeah. Okay, so our last one is our state dinosaur, the most prolific. <laughs> Oh, and did I say that the Triceratops was first found in Colorado? Colorado. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. This is the Stegosaurus. I can look at that. <laughs> and there's a picture of him. Um, he is probably the most prolific, prolifically found fossil in Colorado. You find more Stegosaurus than the others. Uh -huh. And that's why the state adopted him as our state dinosaur. So uh, we, like to, we like to really highlight the Triceratops and the Stegosaurus here at the museum. So, is he a carnivore and herbivore? You know, if we just based on it off the whole neck thing, I would say he's a carnivore. But I don't think we can look and judge a dinosaur by right. by its neck, right? He is an herbivore, right? Because right? he has a shorter neck, like you would think a carnivore. But yeah. you can tell these are all for defense. Yes. And his spiked tail is for defense, so he was an herbivore. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> amazing. So that's, that's so exciting. some fun things that we've learned about our dinosaurs. Now, I want to tell you something fun that we have here at the museum. We actually have a dinosaur rail car here. And we decided to put an herbivore and a carnivore on it. We had these made last year before we even thought we would be doing these programs. Yes. And we actually put our Weld County dinosaur, a Triceratops, and a T-Rex on this car. And so you can get these here at the museum in our gift shop. And it's just a fun souvenir that we thought was fun because we play our dinosaur I spy game here. Yes. And we always like to highlight our dinosaurs inside our train layout. So we love to honor <laughs> the Colorado history. Absolutely. Yep. So I just thought it'd be fun to show people that we have that. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to make a craft? Let's I am. line up some dinosaurs here in the front. <laughs> I got our craft Maybe box. a little bit out of the way. So what supplies do we need for today? I do believe that we're going to need paper plates and we furnished four so you can do one of each of these activities. Although today 
we are only going to each do one. Um, so uh, today I think I'm going to make the Pops the Triceratops mask. And so when it's done, before it's colored, it will look like this. Yep. And so, so we're going to so need a paper a plate. So you need scissors. scissors. I'm going to start with a pencil. Me too. And then maybe a Sharpie. Yes, I will go to a, so Sharpie. Do a Sharpie. Absolutely. And that's really all you need. And then just the paper plate. Now, so. um, I what we can say on both these paper plates is half of it is for the main part. Mine will be the mask. And the other half is for the accessories. Um, and that Michelle, Michelle, you chose a yep. really tough one. I'm going to make this guy. <laughs> He's kind of a stegosaurus, and so, um, like like Misty was saying, when you start with this, and if you have the kit, then you have pictures of the actual patterns. Mm -hmm. But if not, you can just kind of follow along with us. But what you're going to do is you're going to first draw half of your plate as the body. Now I don't have use a, a bit of a hand as as uh, Michelle does, so I'm going to fold mine. So in you're going to do it in half. I'm going to fold mine in half and then I'm going to draw on the line. And if you hear that rain, do you hear the rain? that rain? <laughs> we'll talk louder. Um, I'm going to yell over the rain a little bit. So I'm going to use, that's how I'm going to draw my line here. And we'll go ahead so this and This is definitely half foot. Mine's a guess. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, making this dinosaur, you know that the, uh, the lar second largest piece is the tail. So what I'm going to do is take this end right here and draw my tail out to about probably about halfway to the top, however big you want your tail to be. So you've got that, and then the next largest thing is the head. And I'm going to come up in the middle because I have room right here in the middle, and I'm going to draw my head. So do you see I've drawn that on the plate? Then I definitely need four legs, right? Right. So then I'm going to draw four legs, and I'm going to put them here because this is flat and easy for me to just go one, two three, four legs. And now all the space that I have left, I can just make spines. Right. So I'm just going to start drawing some spines in to cut out because there's no right or wrong number. And then I'm just going to draw some over here like this and just kind of cut down these. And you could make them bigger or smaller, or whatever you want to do. So this is basically, I have just drawn what I'm going to cut out. And this is what I'm going to make into a dinosaur. So now right. we can, you can show I'll what you're going to draw and I'll start cutting. At the end, it will look like this. <laughs> and so what I've done, as I said, I folded it over, folded it in half and drew my line just right down. Almost half. I mean, my line's not even straight, but that's okay. So then in order to uh, get the face is I'm going to just kind of draw where I'm going to cut out. Let's see here. Now I'm going to draw some circles where I think my eyes are going to go. So I'm going to cut out my eye, cut the eyes out so I can see through the mask. Now, the easy part is is to build the horns. I can take from these this point I already have drawn and easily see that there draw some horns. And now what I'm going to do, now the nose is going to be tough, but I'm going to guesstimate and just do a horn like that. And then for the nose, um, the nose is kind of like in between an oval and a heart, I guess. And so what I'm going to do is just eyeball it. And it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you'll see, it, my nose is going to look different than the mask's nose that we have on, for example. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. I'm just going to start here. So we're just cutting and cutting. And enjoying <laughs> the sound of the rain. Yeah, cutting. I hope These could be pointed or they could, if you really wanted to take your time, which I went kind of fast, you could actually make them shaped like the Stegosaurus, which often has more of like a diamond shape. Ah. Like if I were to draw one, it would be more like this shape. And if you can see that. I didn't take the time to do that for each one, but if you look at a Stegosaurus picture, they often had this kind of a, a, a shape. So, yeah. but mine's just going to be fun round ones today for the sake of time. So I've got some spikes cut out and I've got my four legs, a body, a head, and a tail. So now it's just time to get the glue stick out or the tape. And to make this a little bit faster because we're filming, I'm going to use tape. 
But if you used a glue stick, you could just let it dry so that it sticks good before you go on to the next one. Yes. So. Now, Michelle, today we're not going to color these on camera, but we'll, sh we'll post these on Facebook after we've colored yeah. them tomorrow. And we would love to see what you guys come up with, too, in your designs and how you color. You can make a purple dinosaur. You can make a Broncos color, navy blue, and orange dinosaur. Or a Seattle Seahawks dinosaur. Like we were saying, nobody <laughs> knows what color they really right. are. You can use a sports <laughs> theme, Colorado Rockies. <gasps> Hey, purple. the Rocky. Rocky yeah. is a, what kind of dinosaur is Rocky? You dinger. He's a dinger. And oh, he is a, a triceratops. He's a triceratops. A Rocky's guy? Well, I isn't it? I've heard that dinosaurs were actually found where the, right where, Chris, right where the field is. is. Yes. They were found right in Denver. That's interesting. Okay, so to make cutting out the eyes a little easier, I'm going to take a sharp pencil and just kind of give myself a little bit of an opening so I can get scissors in there a little easier without having to fold the mask. So that's what I'm gonna do there. So the smaller scissors might work better um, to get to cut the to get that tight surface there. And always too if you're having some troubles, ask an adult for help. Oh. <laughs> My mask. <laughs> I love uh, dinosaurs and making crafts with them. Yeah. Oh, this this uh, mask was my favorite one that I found. Now, what you can do for your mask is you can also, I'm gonna uh, use the finished one here for the sake of time because uh, I'm not fast at crafts. And it's okay, but I wanna make sure we get to honor your time and watching and learning about Pops the Triceratops from Jennifer there. So, you can take a pencil and some tape and you can have your mask like this or you can uh, do some more holes on the side and put some string in there. Uh, or, hey, hey, hey. But yeah, <laughs> that's great. Do I look like a Triceratops? You look like a Triceratops. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm about to finish my little dinosaur here and then I will have basically a puppet yeah. To play with, I taped those to the back of his head. Let me tape his head down on the back side so that it stays. And, but you know what he's missing? His eye. That's what Whoa. the Sharpie's for. Right. Give him an eye and maybe a smile. There we go. Paper plate dinosaurs. <laughs> So, thank you for tuning in today. Get Stay the, tuned. Thanks for joining our paleontology lessons. We've had a lot of fun with dinosaurs. Our next one, structures. Yeah, that structure starts mm -hmm. June 4th, 9 a.m. Yep. We're changing the time. Greeley Station, YouTube. Arr. Yep. Thanks for joining. And Bye. you guys have a video. Oh, we have a video following this. Yeah, don't, yes, we don't do. forget to we watch our video. video. <laughs> it's a Zoom meeting that we did yes. and recorded with Jennifer since we're, we had to all be in our homes. Yes. But it's a really cool, and there's even a map of Weld County with dinosaurs on it. So Where the dinosaurs are found. Fun. Yeah. So yeah. look, watch the video too. And thanks for joining us. Hi, Michelle Kempema with Colorado Model Railroad Museum here, and Misty's here with us. Hello. <laughs> And today we have a special guest with us. This is Jennifer Fench, and she's the Communications Director at Weld County Government. So hi, Jen. Hi. <laughs> um, this is part of our paleontology series here with our STEAM Kids Education Program. And so we're so glad you're here because you have some cool information about a Weld County dinosaur. I do. So not many people probably realize that Weld County has an official fossil, and it is the Triceratops. And that happened, that became official in 1985, but the Triceratops was discovered in 1982. And what people might not realize, um, although if they've been watching your series on paleontology, they will, that the Front Range in Colorado in general is well known for fossils um, through many era. And so right here in Weld County, uh, we do have uh, what in some reports was the first entire Triceratops skull unearthed in Colorado, and we're lucky enough to have that in our Weld County lobby, uh, and it was donated by 
the family who owned the land that the fossil was found on and they donated it to the county so that all the county residents would always have access to it. That's so exciting. So can you tell us some more details about the story? Sure. So in 1982, a paleontologist that was with the University of Colorado, his name is Ken Carpenter, he and his graduate assistant, Emmett Evanoff, were looking for fossils up in Northern Well County in the Briggsdale area. And they were looking for small vertebrates and they'd been searching the, the prairie out there, came up relatively empty handed. And as they were leaving, uh, Dr. Carpenter saw a little piece of bone sticking out of the ground. Now I laugh because if I would have seen this little piece of bone, I would have just assumed it was a rock. But um, in speaking with uh, now Professor Dr. Emmett Evanoff, who was a graduate student at the time, he said that when uh, Dr. Carpenter saw this little piece sticking out of the ground, he became very excited, very animated, and they started digging around this, what we would have thought was a rock, uh, but it ended up being a fossil, and they started to dig around it, and I can show you what they found here. This was actually, just want to make sure you guys can see this. Oh, wow. This was actually, by the time they had carefully pushed the, the dirt and the rocks away, this is what they found out there in east, northeastern Mill County. And this is the Triceratops skull that we actually uh, have now in our county lobby. So uh, Dr. Carpenter and uh, now Dr. Evanoff, they, they uh, excavated, they, they took this uh, out of the ground and took it to uh, the University of Colorado to work on it and study it and piece it back together. And then it, it had um, uh, some storied interaction between the owner of the land and, and Dr. Carpenter, but the end result was it was donated back to the county after being put back together and uh, now calls our county lobby home. And I apologize, I'm gonna go backwards here, but this is it in our lobby right now. And so this was made official, was officially donated back to the county in 1985. And uh, under the purview that it remained in a county building, so county residents can see it and enjoy it. County employees did name it. And so his name is Pops, the Triceratops. So when you come into our lobby, this is what you see here. I love that. I remember the first time I went into the county building and saw this and I went, wow, a dinosaur. That's so neat. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty cool. Uh, this is from the backside, actually looking down towards uh, his head. So his eyes are, are here. And then this is if you were looking at him head on. And then this is what's uh, behind there. That's extremely well preserved considering the millions of years that it was in the ground. It is. And actually this is, this is a young one. This is considered a juvenile. And this is from, from here to the neck frill is about five feet. And this whole piece here weighs about 500 pounds. Wow. <laughs> and as most everyone uh, knows, or if you don't know, uh, Triceratops means three horned face. And you can see he's got two horns here and then his horn right here, so. Awesome. Yeah. That is so neat. What a fun project. Um, I know that you've showed me a map with a picture of where he was found on it in Weld County. If we can take a yeah. look at that, I think that would be fun. So the fun part about working on this project is I get to dive into all types of historical files. And I was actually speaking with Ray Schiller who is with the Pooter Learning Center. And we were talking about some uh, future programs involving Pops the Triceratops and paleontology and Weld County history. And he pulled out a folder and in it, he had this fabulous brochure that comes from uh, Weld County Historical Society. And I believe this is probably done somewhere in 1982, 83 maybe. And you can see, or I guess it would be a little bit later than that, 85. Um, where the Triceratops was named the official fossil of Weld County. But this obviously is a map of Weld County and you see this little icon here of a Triceratops and this would be about where he was found in the Briggsdale area. That's really, really neat. What a neat piece of our history. Thank you for sharing that. 
Absolutely. It's been a fun project. And yeah. So what's more the future fun as we, I'm sorry. <laughs> what is the future for Pops? Do you have plans? So we do have plans. We have exciting plans. Um, since we've been digging through and, and pulling this information together, um, our director of finance, who's been with the county for, gosh, I believe 40 years, if not longer. He's a wonderful man and a wealth of knowledge. And um, I guess at some, some point he would like to retire. So we're trying to uh, grasp as much of that knowledge and, and, and get his files and whatnot. So he's been sharing files with us. And so he was here when the fossil was donated and um, it made news across the country. It was a rare find at the time and um, in documentation in newspapers and, and in notes that we're finding that um, it made the news from to both coasts. And so that's exciting. So it was a big deal. And so Don actually, um, out of his own budget, uh, he had a conference to go to after the Triceratops was found and named the fossil. So he went and had little buttons made. So we have a few of those. <laughs> that's and awesome. then, uh, what's funny is, you know, he, he keeps finding stuff in his files. And then, so now I am becoming the default holder of anything Triceratops. <laughs> and I am having my own little collection here. But the fun thing was, as they're cleaning out his file cabinets, uh, somebody said, hey, Jen, someone told me that you might want what's in this file, which says Triceratops bones. And I thought, there's, there's no way, there's, no. Oh, uh-oh, we're having some technical difficulty here. These bones uh, and the fossil in general is we had the curator of dinosaurs, Dr. Joe Sertich from um, the Denver Museum of Nature and Science reach out to us and ask if he could study the fossil. And so we worked together with the attorneys and the state archeologists because there's a lot of legal paperwork that has to happen to make sure that that fossil comes back to Weld County as stated in the resolution. But what's really exciting about this is the fossil will get to be studied for the first time. And in return for that, the museum is going to um, deconstruct the fossil. Our, our poor little triceratops isn't quite put together exactly right. His horn's a little wonky, so they're gonna straighten that out. And they're gonna give us, uh, help us with a new display and we'll have a better uh, mount for the fossil to be on. And we'll actually be able to purchase a cast of the fossil, which we'll, um, we'll be able to take out into the community for everyone to share. So we're gonna share this whole process. As soon as everything opens up, we're gonna share the whole process on our website, on Discover Weld, and on some social media sites devoted just for Pops to Triceratops. That's exciting. And I can't wait till it comes to the Colorado Model Railroad Museum and we celebrate him here too. Yes, <laughs> so I'm excited. And all this was because a little piece of a little piece of bone was sticking out of the ground. A little piece. And somebody smart enough to know it wasn't a rock. It's just oh. fascinating to me. So yeah, you know, you just don't know what's what's under the ground, you know. Absolutely. That's, that's our history. It's the history of our planet and yeah, what what a great local story. I'm excited. I know that maybe the kids watching this show might fall in love with the Triceratops now and really celebrate it because it's our dinosaur. It is. It's our dinosaur. And uh, I think there's a lot of, of uh, local community pride we can all take in our rich history here and the preservation of the history. And, and even to the point of community where the family who owns the land was so thoughtful and kind enough to say, let's donate it so all the residents of Oak County and anywhere, we're a public building um, can come and see it and learn about it. And so I'm really excited we'll be able to really fulfill the, uh, the overall idea of what uh, Mr. Mapelli, who was the landowner, wanted to see happen with this fossil was to really celebrate it and have it be a point of pride and, and, and a way for people to learn more about our wonderful county. So just oh, to confirm, sweet. so the museum it's first going to go to is the Denver Museum of uh, Nature and History. Is that right? Nature and Science. Mm -hmm. Nature and Science. Yep. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. This is so exciting. You never know. know. You never know what you can discover in your own backyard. I know. Yeah. It's it's fun, and and it. I'm excited about the path that it's been leading me down. It's it's been really fun. Uh, you know, to get that email out of the blue from Dr. Joe 
I, I call him Dr. Joe, I should probably be a little more professional, Dr. Surtich from the museum was exciting. And, um, you know, I, I think I love all history. Um, dinosaurs were never really my thing, but I think it's fascinating. And I certainly love the museum have ever since I was little. So I was certainly all excited about that. And what's even better are, as I get to talking to more people, learning more about not just the history of this fossil, but the history of our county. So I want to take everyone along that journey and we'll put all that information out for everyone to share and and we'll broaden it out beyond dinosaurs too because there's a lot of really cool what I'll call ancient history. I'm not an expert in any of this, but there's a lot of really interesting and fun things right here in this county to learn about. Um, and so I'm excited to, to contribute that piece and have great people like you guys to help me get that word out. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We're yeah. super happy to do this. Thank you so much for your time today. What a great Absolutely. story. Super happy to share that. And we'll be looking forward to all of your press releases. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, everybody watching, there's so much cool stuff in our county to learn. <laughs> and so <laughs> thank you all for watching. Continue to, to explore. Have a good day. <laughs>